Okay, so we are going to start where we left off in the last video. Except in this one, we're going to be working on giving our character bus a cool Titanfall style pilot helmet. What does that look like? Well, let me see if I can fetch a quick example. Hey, Mac, can I uh, borrow your helmet real quick? You know, I, I just want to show what, uh, you know, what this looks like. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, oh, he's dead. Oh, so his helmet's kind of like, do. Oh, well, uh, sorry about that. Hey, uh, Andy, can I uh, can I just borrow your, your helmet for uh, just, just a sec? Just, just gonna borrow. Oh, oh, he's like in exploded into the wall. Um, they're really cool, okay? So in this video, I'll be going through the process of creating a helmet similar to the one you see in the game. Now, since we left off in the last video, I've actually worked on retopologizing our character's head and have also been trying to texture some skin in Substance Painter. It could be going better, and currently our character head looks a little something like this. Yeah, I know. It's a work in progress, okay? So we're just gonna get started and- Oh my god! What's wrong with your face? All right, all right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna create a sphere and I'm gonna delete half of it. I'll extrude out the bottom portion until it engulfs the head. There, helmet done, you're finished. From here, I'll go into sculpt mode and I'll use the grab brush to just start moving things into a general shape of what I'm going for. I'm not gonna be using sculpt mode a whole lot in this demo. I'm gonna be modeling some basic shapes just to get the major things that I need to work on modeling later on, including the respirator built into the helmet and the communication headset. These objects are mostly meant to be placeholders so I can look at what I'm modeling more holistically. In fact, I probably end up deleting and changing out these items later on. One thing I typically do when I start modeling using a UV sphere is I'll delete the axis point that'll be either at the top or the bottom of the sphere, and I'll replace it with a grid fill using Control F. This simply helps to reduce shading errors that might occur later on when I start using modifiers such as subdivisions and bevels. I'm going to use the grab brush, pinch brush, and inflate just to slightly tweak the geometry before I move on to the next step. I'm mostly using my sculpting tools to check how well the major parts of my model fit together. Now, with the main part of our helmet selected, I'm going to start highlighting some areas of faces, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate them, and P to separate the selection. Next, with the main part of our helmet selected, I'm going to begin highlighting and extracting various areas of faces. With several areas of panels extracted from the main helmet, I'm going to start giving them some thickness with a solidify modifier set to a value around negative 0.1 or negative 0.05. As I continue to make tweaks and adjustments to the panels after I've extracted them, I'll turn my Snap to Faces feature on in the Snap to settings with Align Rotation to Target enabled. In the modifier settings, I'll also enable On Cage so it's easier to edit the panels that I've extracted. I'll continue to tweak and adjust the panel groups. On some panels, I'll select the edges and then go to Vertex and select Smooth Vertices. I'll also split some panels apart to create more breakup between the shapes. I'll begin to add some more modifiers to our various panels. This will include a subdivision surface modifier and a bevel modifier with the limit method set to weighted. Now when you go into edit mode, and in edge select mode, if you select the edges of a panel, you hit Control e and select bevel edge weight, then drag off from your model to set the influence value to 1. However, if you're already a user of the popular hardups add-on, you know that you can simply press Q to bring up your hardups menu and select Mark Sharp. Now I'm going to work on a single panel and I'm going to give it the full stack of modifiers that I want copied over to all of my panel items that I've extracted. So I'll create my modifier stack with everything from the subdivision surface, the bevel with the limit method set to weight, and edit on cage enabled on the solidify modifier. Once I have that done, I'll select all the panels that I've extracted from the helmet, and then I'll select the main panel item that I just created the modifier stack on. I'll then hit Control L, and I'll copy over the modifier stack to all the panel items. This takes the grunt work out of having to create all the modifiers over and over again. 
and now I can just select each panel item individually and tweak the modifiers as needed. I'll begin to skip ahead a little bit, as the modeling process is really pretty basic. I'll play around with some curve geometry, and I'll also start to create some small bits of float geometry. This is parts of the mesh that won't be included in the low poly version. With that being said, I'm also going to quickly cover UV unwrapping and a quick texture bake in Substance Painter at the end. Now that I've created all the different parts of my helmet, I'm going to make sure they're all inside one collection. I'll then duplicate that collection out, and I'll make sure that they are both separated into high and low poly with the suffix underscore high and underscore low. I have a previous video that goes through how to do this and preparing your model for texture baking in Substance Painter. But now with the low poly collection selected, I'm going to start going through each item and either removing or applying the various modifiers. I'll be applying the mirror modifier and the solidify modifier, while I'll be removing the bevel and subdivision modifier. So as I'm going through my low poly model, one thing I want to do is essentially cut a seam everywhere that I put the bevel weight modifier. This is just for convenience sake, and it's pretty simple to do. I'll select one of the edges that I added the bevel weight modifier to, and I'll go up to select, select similar, and choose bevel weight. This will select all the weighted edges. I'll then hit Control E and mark seam. Now, you'll still have to do some tweaking when it comes to marking seams and UV unwrapping, but this will really help speed up your workflow. From here, I'll just be going through the fun and exciting experience of UV unwrapping, if you have any questions about texturing or UV unwrapping, feel free to leave a comment below. But I also created a video on several common texture issues that you might have while working in Blender. So feel free to check that out as well. To skip ahead to the end of the process, once I've unwrapped every part of my helmet, I'll select everything and then I'll pack all the UVs onto one material using UV Packmaster Pro 2 to get the most out of the space on my grid. The end results will look a little bit of something like this. However, I'll also isolate all the interior faces of my helmet, and I'll give them their own separate material. After that, I'll briefly go back to our high poly mesh, and I'll start adding a few smaller details that'll get baked down onto our low poly. This will include some divots, float geometry, and extra bevels. Okay, so now I have my low poly helmet in Substance Painter and we are gonna bake down all the details from the high poly model. So I'm gonna go over to my texture set settings. I'll scroll down to bake mesh maps and we are going to be doing the normal, the world space. I'm not gonna be using the ID in this case. I'll select ambient occlusion, curvature, and position. All right, so in the common parameters, I'm doing a 2K map 
I have my high poly models selected. And then I'm going to leave pretty much everything else at default, except I'll go for the 8x8 subsampling anti-aliasing. And this is important. For match, select mesh by name, since we set up our naming conventions. And for high poly mesh suffix and low poly mesh suffix, make sure that's set to underscore low and underscore high. All right. So this should cover it for all our texture baking needs, and I am just going to hit Bake Helmet Exterior. Okay, and it's done. As you can see, we have all our little float geometry details baked down into the low poly. From here you can start texturing or you can export your normal map and see how it looks in Blender. Otherwise, thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. Otherwise, keep working, get those projects done, and I'll see you in the next one.